Friday, uh, right here, where uh, we were talking about entropy and how we can make a qualitative judgment based on entropy, based on what we see in the chemical reaction. Now, in this case, we got, by the way, the camera hears everything, so don't say anything you don't want on, online. Okay. I hate that guy because of this. Okay, so in this reaction, we've got two things becoming five things. And that alone should be enough to tell us the entropy is increasing. But in this case, we also have two solids producing three gases. Another way that entropy will increase. If you saw three solids going to three gases, you know entropy is increasing. Okay, so we have a situation here where we have two pieces of evidence that tells us the entropy is increasing. Now, that's qualitative judgments about entropy. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a quantitative uh, entropy evaluation. We're going to look at the entropy values that are given to us in a book or online and the chemical reaction, and we're going to calculate the enthalpy of reaction when we're giving these values. First and foremost is something I want you to know about these values. Are any of them zero? No. Notice that this is an element. No. Okay. Even though this is an element, it does not have an entropy of zero. Remember, enthalpy of formation of elements is zero, but nothing has a zero entropy. There is nothing in the universe with zero entropy. Okay? Everything has entropy, even, even the purest element. Okay? So again, don't get enthalpy and entropy mixed up. It's very easy to get them mixed up. Entropy is chaos or disorder. Enthalpy is heat energy. And while the enthalpy of a free element is zero, nothing has a zero entropy. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay, give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Okay. Now, how would we go about calculating the entropy of reaction given these three values? How might we go about doing that? You can just plug in the numbers for the entropy. The, the values of entropy of each of the chemicals. Cool, plug them into one. Plug them into the. Uh, what equation? I don't know. Right? So, delta S. Okay, entropy is a state function, just like enthalpy. And because it's a state function, we only really care about the beginning and the ending states, we can use Hess's law again. Now, Hess's law for enthalpy is the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. Hess's law for entropy is the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reaction. Is this what you were thinking about? So, so the enthalpy of reaction, or entropy of the reaction is the entropy state of the products minus the entropy state of the reactants. Okay. Look familiar from enthalpy? Yeah. Hess's law is exactly the same, it's still products minus reactants. So with this information and this information, what I'd like you to do is calculate the entropy of this reaction. Okay. We determined on uh, Friday that it's grossly positive, it increases hugely positive. So do it, plug the numbers in, and find out exactly how positive. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you do. Yep. You do use the coefficients. So go ahead and do that right up and now. Right up and now. Do it right now. Do you need another book? Uh, I think we got it. Okay. Actually, maybe another book. We held it. Yeah. <laughs> we used a bunch of pieces of paper and calculated. Yeah. <laughs> That's jury rate. Okay. Uh, eventually, hopefully, that's going to be uh, replaced with a tripod or some sort of some sort of gimbal that I'll create for it. It might end up just being a piece of wood or two. <clears throat> oh, that's way better. Okay. So uh, those of you who don't have anything out in front of you besides ATIC, maybe you could become an active participant in your learning. I got a negative number. <laughs> you should not get a negative number. Wow. Remember, it's products minus reactions. Oh. There you go. Again, I don't recommend you do this in your head. I do recommend that you write down the equation and then plug the numbers in where uh, where there are chemicals. What are you saying?
<laughs> so on the products, whenever you're doing the total number, do you add them or do you multiply the product? You use... Okay. So for the products, our products are what two things? It's the uh, uh, 2 KCL and 302. 2 KCL and 302. Not just, not 60, 302. Yeah. Did you use the coefficients? Yes. Use the reaction coefficients, and the reaction coefficients will multiply against those values. So you'll replace, eventually you'll replace KCL with 82.6, and O2 you replace with 205. But do you multiply this by 2? Uh, yes, you multiply. These are multiplied. <laughs> yeah, you multiply. Everybody on the video, remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you watch it before the test. Hey. 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 DJ, remember. Realize that it's the total collection of all the electrons. And that includes the electrons. The moment the electrons stop moving, they slam into the track. That's how you subtract two times one forty three. Okay, so it sounds like uh, a handful of you are done. If you got a positive number, raise your hand. Okay. If you got a positive number that's more than 200, raise your hand. More than 300, raise your hand. More than 400? More than 500? Great, what did you get? 493. I'm going to leave the point one off. And the unit is joules per mole Kelvin. Now, if you don't understand where that came from and you're too shy to mention it, it's, we've replaced the KCL with a 205.1, and we replaced the oxygen with a 205.1. So, oh, sorry, I got those backwards. All right, back up. We replaced the KCL with 82.6, and replaced the oxygen with 205.1, and then replaced the K KCLO3 with 143.7, and we do our math. Okay, and that's what we're gonna get. Now, very, very important thing about entropy. Entropy uses standard units. The standard units are joules, Kelvin, and mole. But chemistry doesn't use standard units. Chemistry uses convenient units. And the convenient unit is the kilojoule. So before we chemistry if I our entropy value, we need to turn it into kilojoules. Now, what's bigger, a joule or a kilojoule? A kilojoule. So in our conversion, our unit is getting bigger, so our number better get? Smaller. Smaller. By how much smaller? A thousand. A thousand. There's a thousand things in a kilo thing. I would much rather run 10 meters than 10 kilometers. So, yeah, uh, so we have 10,000, a unit becoming 10,000 times, or it's a thousand times larger, so we're gonna get 1,000 times smaller. So we should convert this into what? Kilojoules, what number? 400. Yeah, this should be converted to 0.493 kilojoules. 
kilojoules of purple kelvin. Okay. If this makes sense to you, give me a thumbs up. If you have questions about this, it's not quite clear, put your hand and wave it around. Okay. On pass, can you write it in kilojoules? Usually, if you are using, if you're solving for just entropy, that's all we care about, they'll stay in joules. But when we take entropy and enthalpy and put them together, so we're doing it pretty soon, then we're going to convert it to kilojoules. Okay. Cool? Next. Okay. And F is negative 4, or positive 493, a little more Kelvin. Okay, so let's summarize entropy. Does the universe prefer entropy to increase or decrease? Increase. Think about it. If you don't shower for a few days, you don't clean your room for a month, what's going to happen? Increase. Increase, yeah. So the universe prefers increasing entropy. A positive delta S is an increase in entropy. A negative delta S is a decrease in entropy. Now, don't confuse entropy and enthalpy. They are two different things that work together. Enthalpy is heat. Entropy is chaos. And let's just summarize what the universe favors. Again, we say these are thermodynamically favored or spontaneous. Spontaneous is the word that we use to, to mention, to say the universe likes it. Okay, so enthalpy. What sign, with a, pop, with a thumb, positive or negative, does the universe prefer? Does the universe prefer a positive enthalpy value, where energy goes into a system, or a negative enthalpy value, where energy comes out of a system? What do you think? Does you, is, what, is, what is spontaneous? A positive entropy, or enthalpy value, or a negative enthalpy value? Um, Uh-oh, it's about 50-50 about at this point. Okay, the universe loves explosives, loves fireworks. What does the universe prefer? That a system takes in energy from the universe or gives off energy back to the universe? It gives off. So the universe prefers negative enthalpy. The universe prefers a negative enthalpy. So the, this tends towards spontaneity. A negative enthalpy tends towards spontaneity. What about entropy? Does the universe like molecules coming together for a, a negative entropy change? Or does the universe like molecules spreading apart for a positive entropy change? What do you think? Positive, negative, what do you think? Looks like almost all of you say, yeah, positive, yep. So the universe does prefer a positive entropy. Again, when in doubt, think fireworks. The universe loves fireworks. Fireworks release a lot of heat and spray their molecules all over the world. Okay, questions so far? All right. Now there's this thing that ties enthalpy and entropy together, and it is called Gibbs free energy. Free energy is the energy required to make the reaction happen, or the energy we can harvest as useful work. And it's named after a guy named Willard Gibbs. Cool, American, rock on. American. It is a value, it is the end all value of the system, it's the one we care about. It is a value that ties together the enthalpy and the entropy into one number that says this reaction is spontaneous, this reaction isn't spontaneous. And it has a very cool equation. It's delta G equals delta H minus T delta X. So, what I'd like you to do, I'm going to do it in a second, what I'd like you to do is write the Gibbs equation down and then make a 3 by 4 box under it. So, 3 columns, 4 rows under the Gibbs equation. Do you want a pen? <laughs> no. This will ruin our video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we just got good music quality. Yeah. I'm just like, I want a pen. So, if you guys wouldn't mind, copy this table down because it's going to be very, very valuable. 
It's also what we're going to use in tomorrow's lab. Ooh. What's the lab have? I'm sorry? What's the lab have? Free energy. Well, what? never mind. Yeah. We're going to do an exothermic process and an endothermic process and compare their enthalpy, entropy, and free energy changes. Basically, we're going to do the same reactions that you've seen in, in videos where we're actually going to do them in front of you. You're like, hey, you'll, you'll be able to do it yourself. Give me a little time to write your grid. You don't need to make it super beautiful. Have something that you can refer back to. Can we add those tick marks? I'm sorry? Do we add the tick marks? This is an equal sign and a negative sign. Okay. Yeah, this is equal, 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 minus, minus, minus. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's your YouTube again, just so I know? My, oh, it's, you just search for Chris, Christopher Byers Boulder City High School. It's YouTube slash C slash Christopher Byers Boulder City High School slash. Nice plug. Plug. Ring that bell. Like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, so are we ready for this? Some of you are still writing. All right, so gives free energy, ties together enthalpy in heat energy, and entropy chaos. Now, we talked about last time that temperature plays a profound role in entropy. Why does temperature play a profound role in entropy? So much so we actually attach it to the entropy term. Why? Because entropy is the how everything is. I'll take it. Yeah. So temperature is a measure of molecular movement. And the more movement you have, the more chaos you have. So temperature is going to determine how big the entropy term is. Okay, now, let's look at our table here. Enthalpy. What sign, positive or negative, is spontaneous for enthalpy? Positive. Negative. Negative. The universe likes, the universe likes a good solid negative entropy when energy is coming out of a system. So a negative entropy or enthalpy change is spontaneous. What about entropy? What does the universe prefer uh, for entropy? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. The universe wants uh, entropy to be positive. And by the way, temperature can get, can't be anything but positive, so it doesn't change the sign at all. So if a negative enthalpy is spontaneous and a negative, or sorry, a positive entropy is spontaneous, that means you have two factors that are both acting to be spontaneous, which means delta G will definitely be spontaneous. So if your enthalpy value and your entropy value are both spontaneous, that means your delta G will also be spontaneous. Mathematically, what sign must delta G then be? It must be negative. For those who can't see it, a negative minus a positive has to be more negative. Okay? A negative minus a positive is more negative. Negative 100 minus 50 is negative 150. Make sense? All right. So if you have a negative, if you have a spontaneous enthalpy value and a spontaneous entropy value, your delta G is definitely going to be spontaneous. On the other side of the coin, what sign of enthalpy is non-spontaneous? Positive. The universe does not like systems that want to take more energy, take in more heat. And what sign of entropy is non-spontaneous? Negative. The universe does not like systems that become more ordered. So if your enthalpy is non-spontaneous and your entropy is also non-spontaneous, then you have to realize your delta G is definitely going to be non-spontaneous. And what is a positive minus a negative? More positive, right? No other way. If a positive, a positive minus a negative just becomes more positive. 100 minus negative 20 is 120. Make sense? Okay. So there we go. So far, give me a thumbs up if you're with me so far. If both factors are spontaneous, delta G is going to be spontaneous. If both factors are non-spontaneous, delta G is definitely non-spontaneous. What if they're in conflict? What if the enthalpy value is spontaneous, but
but the entropy is non-spontaneous. So let's look at that situation. So an enthalpy value that is spontaneous is negative, and an entropy value that is, is non-spontaneous would also be negative. So now they're in conflict. My negative minus a negative could go either way, right? Yeah. It could be negative 100 minus negative 50, still negative 50. Or it could be negative 100 minus negative 200, which would be what? Positive 100. Positive 100. So they're in conflict. What is going to determine which one wins? Temperature. Temperature. Exactly. Oh. Temperature. Temperature determines which one wins. Temperature is the magnifier that determines how big entropy is. So what does this mean? Entropy is non-spontaneous. So what this means is non-spontaneous at high temps, but if the temperature is very small, your enthalpy will carry over and it will be spontaneous at low temps. Again, temperature determines the spontaneity of a reaction when enthalpy and entropy are in conflict. So if your entropy term is non-spontaneous, high temperatures means the reaction is non-spontaneous. Low temperatures mean spontaneous. <laughs> kind of goofy. Hopefully you're paying attention and not making a mess of your ink on your page. On the other hand, it should also follow that if you have a non-spontaneous enthalpy and a spontaneous entropy, the opposite is also, also kind of the same. So if you have a non-spontaneous enthalpy but a spontaneous entropy, it's going to be spontaneous at high temperatures or low temperatures. What do you think? Chat with your neighbor for 10 seconds. If you have a... Is it going to be eh? okay. Do you guys think high or low? I think high. High? I'll trust you on this one. I'll go high. High. Okay. Okay. So, we have a non spontaneous enthalpy and a spontaneous entropy. Who believes this is going to be spontaneous at high temperatures? Who believes this is going to be spontaneous at low temperatures? What do you think? Thumb up for high temperature, thumb down for low temperatures. Most of you got a thumb up, and you're right. So, because the entropy term is spontaneous, this is going to be spontaneous at high temps, but non-spontaneous at low temps. That's important. Okay. When you have enthalpy and entropy in conflict, temperature determines which one wins. What if temperature means they're equal in magnitude and delta G is zero? It's an equilibrium. And that's the point, that's where you have a tipping point, where you can be like, okay, let's say the temperature when you, that makes them equal to each other is 200 degrees. That means over 200, entropy's better. Under 200, enthalpy's better. Make sense? Mm -hmm. We're going to do some sample exercises along those lines. Any questions? Bada -bing, bada -bing. Okay, so a negative Gibbs free energy is spontaneous. We'll say it's product favored. And a positive Gibbs free energy is non spontaneous, and we call that reactant favored. And like Parker mentioned in the back, the delta G of zero means neither the products nor the reactants are favored. They're in equilibrium. <laughs> in a situation where, just like, in, like we've been learning, at equilibrium, the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are happening at the same rate. They are neither product favored nor reactant favored. The reaction is in a state of equilibrium.
don't know where the little Moses came from. He just appeared one day. Little Moses. As, as is the case. <laughs> Stuff like this. Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to move on. Put your hand up and wave it around if you have questions. I mean, no. No? Yeah? We're good? Yeah. Alright. You just want to wait for 10, 10 more seconds? Okay. Yeah. Box. All right, so take a look at this. This is from your textbook. When you use textbooks, this is basically this is a summary. Positive delta H is endothermic. Negative delta H is exothermic. Entropy doesn't tell you anything about heat, and heat doesn't tell you anything about chaos. Okay, they are two separate interacting uh, 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 phenomena. They're separate, but they interact. When they come together, delta G positive means you're non-spontaneous, delta G negative means you're spontaneous. Most importantly, right, sure, you take your entropy value and divide by 1,000 before you plug them into Gibbs equation. Okay. Entropy values will usually be given to you in joules per Kelvin mole. Please remember to divide it by 1,000 so you get, uh, you can basically get kilojoules, so they interact. You got to chemistry of fire to make it a convenient here. Okay, practice. First question. No, no numbers involved. If enthalpy is non-spontaneous, but entropy is spontaneous, what determines whether what determines whether the reaction is spontaneous? Temperature. Temperature. Okay, here we go. Math now. If a reaction has an enthalpy value of positive 340 kilojoules per mole and an entropy value of positive 3,240 joules per mole Kelvin, is the reaction spontaneous at 470 Kelvin? What I'd like you to do is work on this. So write up Gibbs equation, plug the numbers in, and then when you've got an answer, convince your neighbor that it is spontaneous or it isn't spontaneous. <clears throat> Pause the video and do the equation. I could pause the video, but if I pause the video, that means I have to recombine it later. No, no. It's like an extra hour the, and a half. The person watching it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I can use Movie Maker to put pieces together. The problem is, like, it takes a long time. Yeah. So. What do you make sure to subscribe? You get m and True. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Ring that bell. Ring that bell. The bell? Yeah. It notifies you. Well, yeah, but does that do anything for, like, the YouTuber? Make mad cash after a while. Mr. Byers is going to be a rich YouTuber. I can't. The, the, school, the school owns the channel. Like, it's not monetizable. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Wow. What if you start your own YouTube channel then? Who knows? What do you mean for my, my hundred and six subscribers? Hey, everybody starts somewhere. Yeah, that's right. You got it. Uh, a really good YouTuber what? about two Where months ago you? talked about, like, how do I get to YouTube? It's like, well, if someone's already doing what you want to do, it's too late. <laughs> Everyone disappoints you at some point. <laughs> I was just adding to the discussion. What were you talking about? Oh, you know, I'll ask you ask questions about Thursday. So, delta H. Is delta H spontaneous or non-spontaneous? I'll tell you. Delta H. Delta H. Delta H. Non -spontaneous. This is non-spontaneous. Universe no like you. The universe no like you values that are positive uh, entropy or enthalpy. Doesn't like it. So, we have a positive 340 for the enthalpy. Temperature is always positive, in this case 470. And then the entropy term is, what did you write down for entropy? Good. Entropy value is 3.24, and then now it's kilojoules. 3.24 kilojoules. So this is a spontaneous or non spontaneous entropy? Spontaneous. Okay. This is a spontaneous. So we have a situation where our enthalpy is non-spontaneous and our entropy is spontaneous, and then we just do our math and we can find out what our actual value is. Spontaneous. If you've done the math and you think it's spontaneous, give me a thumbs up. If you've done the math and you think it's non-spontaneous, give me a thumbs oh. down. It's like about two thirds of you have done the math. I'll give you one more minute.
guessing thumbs up. Spontaneous, give me a thumbs up. If you think it's not spontaneous, give me a thumbs down. Looks like almost all of you now think it is spontaneous. What value did you get for uh, the double G? <laughs> Second. Ethan, what did you get? Negative Or two. One hundred eighty-two. So negative one thousand eight hundred eighty-two kilojoules per mole. So yep. Hey, this is definitely. Uh, this is a spontaneous process. You have a negative delta G. Spontaneous. Is there a temperature at which it would be non-spontaneous? Yeah, exactly. If you want to figure out what temperature it would be to be non-spontaneous, you set this equal to zero and solve for temperature, which is what we're going to do here just a little bit. So if you want to know what temperature something becomes spontaneous, you just set your delta G to zero and solve for temperature. Which should make sense because if your entropy and nth value are fighting, the point at which one become one wins, the other, other loses, is zero. So when entropy is winning, and enthalpy or enthalpy is winning, the tipping point is when their delta G is zero. So take a look. If a reaction has a delta H of negative 810 kilojoules per mole and a delta S of negative 1524 joules per mole Kelvin, what temperatures make the reaction spontaneous? So set it equal to zero and solve for T. Get the T. So basically there's a range of temperatures where the reaction is spontaneous and a range of temperatures where the reaction is non-spontaneous. We want to know what that tipping point is. What temperature makes the entropy term small enough that the reaction becomes spontaneous? Set G to zero and solve for T. a negative sign. So you're going to subtract or add one of the things. So what you're ultimately doing is you're setting this. You see how you added both sides to delta S? What you're ultimately doing is you're setting T delta S equal to delta H. T delta S equal to delta H. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a negative sign, not a multiplication. It's a negative, not a multiplication. <laughs> oh, come on, it might be right. Well, because I literally just like. Ethan, do you think it's right? Ethan, what do you get? Side, Ethan, do you think it's right? Uh, what? Do you think it's right? No. Yes. What did you get? Uh, uh, 811. Whoa. This guy's got 811. That's not what I got. This kid's got 808. And what did you get, McKenna? So you got a negative, a non spontaneous entropy of negative 1.524. Do you remember to convert it to kilojoules? John got 531. And then uh, that's multiplied by T. Somewhere. And that's going to equal a spontaneous value of negative 810 kilojoules per mole. What is that? I believe Ethan is right. There we go. So that means, this is, by the, by the way, this is not minus, this is multiplied by. So that's the Y. So the tipping point. If you got a temperature larger than 100, raise your hand. 
And again, temperature is always positive. Its absolute value, Kelvin, can't be negative. If you got a number larger than 400, raise your hand. Or is it 600, raise your hand? What'd you get? 531. 531.5. 531 Kelvin. And John was so what this correct. means John was correct is at 531 Kelvin, the non-spontaneous reaction becomes spontaneous. John in their class. Or the spontaneous reaction becomes non-spontaneous. true. So, have we answered the question yet? No. 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 Nope. We need to determine if this should be a greater than or a less than sign. Oh. Because it says, if a reaction has an enthalpy of negative 810, which is spontaneous, and a, negative, a delta S of negative 1.524 kilojoules, which is non-spontaneous, what temperatures make the reaction spontaneous? Yes. Are you answering the question or asking a question? When you're one of the Q, yes, you may. Okay, so lean over your neighbor and look at the data and say, okay, it should be less than 531 or more than 531 Kelvin? Should it be less than 531 or more than 531? We've been doing some learning today. You absolutely could, yeah. So the question was, could you just like plug a number in? You totally could. You could just like plug in 500 or 600 and see where it goes. Absolutely works. Um, that's the way you want to go. That's fine. Whatever else you learn. Mm -hmm. Let me start a merge line for Mr. Ryers. Plug in 532. Why not? What would you call it? Mr. Byers, can we start making merch for your YouTube channel? Uh, yes, we'll make merch next year. Go to merch store. I'm not going to be here. Discount the merch store. Support me on Patreon. I'll buy some merch. I'll buy some merch. I'll buy some merch. I'll buy some merch. Mr. Byers' face is hard to see. Get your belt on. What do you want? Okay, I turned it away, McKenna. Turn it away. Look. Look at him. Hey. Hey. This is cool. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> is the reason for all the shaking. Okay. Look, guys. We have six minutes left in class and one more exercise to do. If you believe <laughs> that it is spontaneous at lower temperatures than 531, <laughs> give me a thumbs down. If you think it's spontaneous at higher temperatures than 531, give me a thumbs up. Looks like thumbs most up. of you, except for Noah, are going with lower, and you're right. Oh, dang it. It's a thumbs down. <laughs> it's a thumbs down. <laughs> this should be a less than sign. Because, again, entropy is affected by temperature. At an increased temperature, entropy plays a bigger role. So we found the tipping point. At an increased temperature, entropy plays a bigger role. But look, entropy I is non spontaneous. At a smaller temperature, entropy plays a smaller role, and the spontaneous enthalpy determines the reaction. How are we doing? Okay. Is steam coming out yet? Wait for one more exercise? Break it on. Sharp pointy rocks at the bottom? Bring it on. Okay, this one's for you. I'm not even going to walk you through it. It's exactly the same, but a little bit easier. A reaction was found to be spontaneous at temperatures above 1,200 Kelvin and non-spontaneous below 1,200 Kelvin. It's in. If the enthalpy is positive, a non-spontaneous 852, what is its entropy value? Okay, so work this one out. Well, I uh, get the camera 